welcome to Service for the Community. I'm your host, Lauren Culver. Today we have some really uh, cool topics we're talking about today with Jeff Litke from the Clarkson Rotary, Sarah Banks, a sophomore from Clarkson High School, and uh, Ken Ermer from the Optimist Group. So thank you guys for coming today. Glad yeah. to be here. Cool. Yeah, good to be here. Good to be here, yeah. Uh, so Sarah, let's um, open up with you and discuss the Youth Exchange Program. Um, yeah. So you are going to attend a country in August, yes. correct? Yes, yeah. Um, so are, are you excited about it? I'm 100% excited. I'm anxious to figure out which country that I am going to be placed in, which family I'm going to be placed with, and I'm also equally as nervous about how I'm going to interact with the people there and how school is going to go with my family, all of that. It's equally as exciting and nervous. Oh, I'm sure. But that's a pretty big jump for you as a sophomore. Yeah, I've never actually done... Have you been out of the country? Yet? No, I've never actually left the country. I've been to Canada once, but <laughs> I don't think that yeah. counts. <laughs> um, so what are your top choices? Um, the one choice that I'm looking forward to is Croatia. It seems okay. like a really beautiful country, really amazing culture. My second choice is Sweden, and then my third choice is Peru. Awesome. Um, so why did you choose to go? I chose to go because I actually mentioned this to Jeff in an earlier interview, how the world is so multidimensional, and me living where I am, I've only seen one side of that, and I'm really looking forward to broadening my horizons and expanding my viewpoint and getting to know all the sides of the world. Cool. Um, so what do you hope to get out of this trip? I hope to further my skills, you know, speaking to other people around the world language-wise, communication. I also want to expand my mind and my opinions, Ch maybe change them for the better on how I view things like current events and my family and my friends and the world around me. Cool. Well, one of the things we find with our youth exchange students is when you start reading about the United States from a newspaper from a foreign country, it really presents a different picture hmm. and it also really makes you a real patriot that all of a sudden you're, you're defending your country and uh, to see it from another point of view is really fantastic. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing Sarah's comments as she writes back to us on her experience. Definitely. So are you guys um, communicating with each other along the way? Will you be as you're there? Tell them what's going to happen at the end of the month. Well, at the end of this month, I am going to Canada for a meeting with students that are in our district this year from other countries and oh. students that are looking to go next year and all the parents and members of Rotary in our district. And our district is the area with Chatham, Ontario, Canada, all the way down to parts of Northern Ohio. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll be cool. So you can ask advice, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, what, they, what their experiences were and mm -hmm. help you get more prepared. Yeah, we start the process with uh, some of the do's and don'ts and some of the things you can anticipate. And then one of the things we like to do is make sure that they can present themselves professionally when they go there. Because one of the things she's going to have to do is she goes to Croatia. She will learn the language, but she's going to have to make a presentation before the Rotary Club oh, in Croatia. So, wow. so we outfit them with uh, jackets, blazers, mm -hmm. uh, attaché case, some uh, business cards, and everything yes. so that uh, they can I'm, present themselves yeah. well. That's a really good um, real world experience though, for you later on. Yeah, I feel like when I do give that presentation to the people in Croatia and the Rotary Club, I think I will be so nervous because I don't want to make a full of myself, yeah. speaking the language, and little things like customary things that are different in the U.S. as they are in other countries. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll nail it though. Oh, Thanks. I think yeah. she's going to nail it. And then one of the other things, everybody in that club is going to be rooting for her. Exactly. And, and so mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a fun experience. Yeah, it's nice to know. At least from us. I'm yeah. not sure about the <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to know I have all these people on my side looking out for me while I'm there. Of course. So um, kind of related to that, well, how did your parents take all of this? Oh, well, a lot of people I've talked to, their parents were super nervous about them going and didn't want them to leave, but it was actually my dad who proposed the idea to me, and he said, wouldn't this be fun? You've always wanted to travel, you've always wanted to see the world, wouldn't you love doing this? 
and he'd already, when he was younger, my age, been to Sweden for a couple months oh, okay. on a athlete exchange, and my aunt has been to France, and my other aunt on my mom's side has been to Germany, so a lot of my family members are familiar with exchange programs and be, like broadening your horizon, so my entire family is 100% backing me up on this. That's awesome. Do you think they'll come visit you? Um, well, actually, for the first couple of months, Rotary does not like to have family oh, come and visit really? you. So, I guess so you kind of get more used yeah. to it. Yeah, right. On your own. Mm -hmm. Most students do not experience homesickness, but if you do and mom's calling you every other night, yeah. uh, it can really be hard to move yourself from here, from Clarkston to Croatia, or wherever she goes. So, we really discourage that. She should call and say, Mom, I'm home, yeah, I'm, I'm, alive. I'm here. Yeah, I, I landed on my plane, yeah. I'm okay, nothing happened. And then, then we'd like a quiet period. That's and quiet. then as she gets into it, she will make friends and they will want to do things. And just like teenagers here, do you want mom to show up at your party here? <laughs> so the same thing happens over there. So we really discourage the, the parents to show up until maybe sometime in April or May okay. of the year. So the exchange starts in August, normal school system time period. So maybe in May or even better would be to come right at the end. Uh, we had a number of families where they showed up the last day and then they went on, if they're in Europe, they went on a couple week trip to Europe and guess who's the guide at that point. So it, uh, that can That's make a true. nice end of the year. That's but, true. You can yeah. show them around. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so Ken, along with the student programs, you with the Optimist Club, you have a lot going on with we do. The, yeah, the Optimist Club is uh, really to support students, support the the things that go on and, and a couple of things that we do is uh, like Citizen of the Month where actually the, pres uh, the principal of the school will pick a particular student and we will congratulate that student on what they've done in that school and their achievements in that school. So it, it is a way to uh, uh, you know, get them the self-confidence and stuff like that. Uh, we also have a, you know, Oracle contest where uh, students come and give a speech and so therefore uh, they get the practice of speaking, public speaking to people, and then the contest uh, goes on and, and there's scholarships available for the people that win. We also have an essay contest also where uh, they write an essay, uh, we review those essays, and we pick winners and the winners go on to win particular scholarships. Cool, and you um, actually brought in a video for the oratorical There's a video contest. for the oratorical tar contest, yes, <laughs> <laughs> which is a tongue twister. It right? is. Oratorical. <laughs> oratorical. There you go. <laughs>Mention again the dates for both of these contests. Well, the uh, oratorical contest, uh, you have to register by uh, February 5th. Uh, the essay, I'm not quite sure what the date is. Um, basically, what I'm involved in is, of course, to have this organization work and have this money available, we do fundraisers. And so really, I'm kind of involved in the sideline of uh, having some particular fundraisers. And believe it or not, it is selling hot dogs and <laughs> bratwurst. At, at events. <laughs> <laughs> and how it really started was uh, back in 2000, I think about 2009, 2008, 2009, a couple of ladies got together and decided let's have breakfast brats, believe it or not. Uh, here's a picture of, of the group. We had breakfast brats at the farmer's market where we would have bratwurst, eggs uh, on a bun and we would sell those and we would, uh, it would be a fundraiser to, to make some money. The real emphasis here, though, was uh, the community event, 
participate in the community and the camaraderie with the optimist people themselves. So we've had some, a lot of fun doing that. And then we went into going into now coming up is a Shiver by the River event where we're going to be uh, giving out chili. Uh, and the we optimists have put up the ice skating rink. And so we went out, bought the lumber, and put wow. up the rink and fill it up with uh, uh, water and have it freeze over. Now we're hoping this Saturday, I was gonna say, which is tomorrow, <laughs> we're hoping it's going to be Shiver on the River. It might be swimming in the pond. But, yeah. we're, not sure. but we're still going to be there with the group. And you can see some pictures of the gang. Um, we're going to be serving chili at this particular thing. Awesome. A couple other events, we do art in the park. I think everybody knows what art in the park is done in Depot Park. We also then have corn and stuff like that. And again, the emphasis for this is to, correct, uh, to get the money for a fundraiser, to have the money available for some of these things that we do with the students. One of the other big things we do is the joy clubs. We, um, we support joy clubs in the schools where students can join the joy club and it gives them the ability to, again, give speeches, uh, do community service and things like that. Cool. All all things that students can really. Um, e yeah. Emphasis gain, is gain edu from. education and yeah. experience, right? That's awesome. I'd like to put in a real plug for their uh, oratorical contest. Um, I got the privilege of being a judge on that one time, and if I think you still are looking for judges from time to time. Okay. If anybody out there has a, an interest that way, it's a real fun day. It's uh, it's amazing what these students come up with, and then just as a kind of a cross thing that our organizations do help each other and work with each other. Uh, one of our Rotary International presidents actually won that contest wow. uh, one year, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and he is a great orator. He, he really is. Wow. But it's, I'm sure that helps. If you context. could be a judge in that, you would really enjoy that day. It's so fun. what's a, in a little bit, what's the day like for a judge? Uh, first you get some direction, but not a lot, <laughs> on what you're looking for. And then you sit there and you listen to these speeches. And there's a common theme to the speech. Uh, each one of them has a common theme, so there's overlap that you can actually say, yes, this one was better than that. And there are a few kids that come out that are clearly up here and a few that are clearly down there. And it's this process then of, okay, which one or two or three of these top four or five kids are we actually going to give the award to? Okay. And sometimes that can really be difficult. Oh, sure. Sometimes there's one that just stands out way above the rest. But usually it's not that easy. <laughs> well, you've got to think about the fact that public speaking is probably the third uh, most strenuous thing for a person to do. A lot of people cannot do public speaking very well at all. And so this uh, gives a, a student the practice to do this. That's true. As they grow up in their, and go on and further in their career, they're going to be able to have to give talks to uh, organizations to conferences and things like that and so this oracle contest is to the rotary to the rotary, to the rotary. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah as, as she will be doing this is a practice thing this is where you learn and this is where you get to do this and so as an optimist we we supply that ability for for the students to be able to do that that's awesome so um back with the rotary again what else do you guys uh, have going on in the future or things yeah, you've done? I, I think if we could at this point I'd like to, since you did such an excellent job on a video for us, <laughs> uh, I think maybe we could cue that up and go back and take a look at our project this fall for selling the rotary papers uh, which then led to the shoes for kids and the octagon socks uh, yes. were right. also there. So. Goodfellow newspaper sales is part of Clarkson Rotary. Uh, on Friday and Saturday, the first week in December, weekend in December, we sell newspapers for donations. And 100% of what we collect over these two days is spent the following weekend on our Shoes for Kids program. Uh, we've done this for over 38 years, and this year we have almost 300 Clarkson kids who will be getting new winter boots, shoes, hats, gloves, uh, 
toothbrushes, toothpaste, the Lions Club will be doing uh, eye exams, and the Optimus will be providing what they call their OptiSocks. The thing that's nice about this program is all the information for the Shoes for Kids is in here. We collect the money today with the generous support of the Clarkston community, and then next week we'll give away over 300 pairs of shoes, boots, mittens, and gloves to kids that really need the help here in Clarkston. Probably between the two days we'll have probably over 100 to 120 volunteers uh, at all the different locations in two-hour shifts. And uh, we've been fortunate this year that uh, we have people that also donate food and drinks for us. So we're pretty fortunate to have a lot of community involvement, both in vol uh, volunteers and donations, and then uh, obviously the community embraces this program if they supported it for the last 38 years. So far we fit one family and I helped get this little girl some shoes and she was so excited she got these light up shoes and she wouldn't stop like hot, bouncing, bouncing around in them like that was my favorite part just seeing her get the shoes. It's a wonderful program everybody has a tendency to believe that people in Clarkston are not in need which is absolutely not true. Continuing and growing, um, in the last couple of years, we have managed to get the local dentists to all donate toothbrushes and toothpaste. We now get enough that every family member of the family gets at least a toothbrush and toothpaste. We um, are hoping that next year maybe we will have one of the local dentists is going to do um, just quick dental exams. We have grown so much. Um, when my family started doing this, we had maybe 50 children and we handmade baked cookies for all of the kids, so they each left with cookies also, and we've seen it go up in those years up to as many as 650 kids. We took in collections of over $13,000 last weekend, over Friday and Saturday, so it was a really a lot of generous people, and I wanted to say thank you personally to the community for being so generous. Awesome. Yeah. So that was a fun event. Well, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's very rewarding, and it's, uh, we look forward to it all every year. And the community having the community involved with us is is really nice to have. So that's what uh, we did in the fall. Fall is our insanely busy time period. We had a couple fundraisers in yeah. there, Labor Day parade, and all that. So now we kind of go into a little bit of uh, a slower time. But we have some really interesting speakers coming up. Uh, one of the nice things about being an evening club is we're a little more relaxed, we get a little more time, there's That's not true. the pressure to leave. So we have some good speakers, you usually give them a half hour to talk. And so immediately coming up we have a doctor who's gone on medical missions for years and years and years to Zimbabwe. Wow. So he'll be telling us about that. Then we're going to go over to the Independence Library and one of the things I don't think the community really knows is there's a lot of business resources there. Hmm. And there's a couple people that will help businesses do research, marketing research, or where are your customers. So we're actually going to go to the, uh, the library and we'll have dinner there too and, uh, and get a real in-depth uh, review of what they have to offer to the business in terms of research. And then down the pike we've got such diverse things as a gal's going to come in and talk to us about Native Indian culture, American Indian culture. Uh, we have a the new urgent care facility that's coming up. The doctor involved with that will be there. So we have a number of, oh, and our own polio story. We have an yeah. expert from, from that. Does that's a, a huge story. Yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, hope everybody caught the recent uh, article in the Clarkston News where the alternative high school uh, helped us out on that project and learned about polio. Um, it was really interesting when the uh, the kids talked about it and said they were doing okay with it the description of the virus and everything was one thing but when they saw the kids in the iron lung oh. uh, that really got to them oh, I bet. So, yeah, so. so those are uh, some of the things uh, we meet at Buckshots cool. and so if you'd like to come up and join us come up a little after six and a little after six yeah all right um, so I think that wraps up what we well, I wanted to were. introduce, since he's at Buckshot's at 6 o'clock, oh, you, yeah, can, you can come in the morning at 7.30 <laughs> on Wednesdays uh, for the Optimist Club. We meet at the Clarkston United Methodist Church uh, every Wednesday at 7.30 in the morning. And you'll find out that that time in the morning, there's lots of enthusiasm for a lot of the members that are there. And we certainly would want to invite anybody that like to join and like to come and see how the club works and any of the students that would like to come and 
and uh, participate in some of the things that are going on. So Perfect. we work out real good Perfect. that way. So one morning of the meetings, evening meetings, we're, we're covered all over. <laughs> right. And one of the other things I, I forgot to mention is the Optimist. We do uh, help out the Renaissance uh, High School. We have a, a picnic for them after their last day of school. That's cool. And uh, the other big thing that happened to us was uh, the Christmas parade. We decided to sell bratwurst and hot dogs <laughs> after the Christmas parade. And of course, the discussion was, well, how many people are going to show up for this? Because it could be bitterly cold outside. It was a perfect night. It was a perfect night. Yeah. That meant a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So yes, we did run out of hot dogs. Oh. Yes, we ran out of bratwurst. And uh, we ran out of everything because we had a big crowd of people that had a good time. And it's a good, again, a fundraiser for the money yeah. to be able to support these programs for the kids and along with how the Rotary supports the uh, students yeah. also. That's awesome. Good. So anything you wanted to add, Sarah? Um, not anything else than what Jeff and I have already said. Cool. You're just really yeah. pumped and ready to I go. am absolutely it's mind-blowing to me, the things that I'm getting to do for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing working with Rotary because it's not too expensive you know, for my family. Something like this. That's good to know, too, for yeah. other kids if they're unsure oh, about costs. Yeah, I totally thought that something like this was out of reach for me. I couldn't do it. There was no way. But I talked to Jeff, and I was, well, my dad talked to Jeff, and then I was iffy about it for a couple months, and this is a funny story, two nights before the applications were due, I looked at my dad and I said, maybe I really would want to do this. I think this is something that I'm really looking forward to doing. And then we filled out the application and then the next night I submitted it, submitted it. <laughs> and then I got to go to a meeting with Jeff and um, all the other Rotarians and it was really exciting for me. Cool. To watch maybe, the whole process unfold. Maybe we could throw up the, uh, the website. Yes, the website. Yeah, there we go. So if you want to go there, it's got some information. Uh, for more questions, uh, give me a call and you can contact me through the youth ex er, rotary.org. Perfect. And, and then, of course, the same thing. Uh, yeah, we're high, high technology also. You. We have a website. Uh, that's the, that the thing of the future is uh, more and more technology. So yeah, collectoptimist.org, and you can find out all kinds of information about our organization and what we do and how we service the, the students. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to uh, come on. And uh, you got out of class, too. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that, <laughs> that wasn't too bad. <laughs> well, well, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Um, and that will do it for this episode of Service for the Community.